Hi folks. As you know, and you've probably seen my videos on my Auto G's from uh, Hobby King. I love these things. They're auto gyros. In fact, I'm thinking of building my own real one. And uh, I like these things. Well, I just got the latest one. And this is pretty ingenious. This one has a pre-rotor startup. It looks like a speedometer cable right there. And this looks, this is great because this will allow the rotor to spin because as you know, these things have a tendency to want to take off and veer to the left if you don't have enough rotor speed. It's just naturally inherent thing with auto gyros. But they've got a one-way bearing here and, it, and it's a little sloppy so nothing can go wrong. We've got two speed controllers in there now, one for that. And uh, we're going to put this together and we're going to go out and fly them and see how it works. You need to pick up a battery this size that'll fit in here and you're also going to need uh, a receiver and I'm going to stick in one of my orange receivers. So let's get started. Alright, here goes the spin up. Let's see what this does. Is that slick? Oh, that is slick. Let's go fly. How much of a runway we're going to need here? If that'll roll, I'm going to hit the roll up switch and see what happens. Here we go. And it's off. It's off. <laughs> Power. Let's see if that helps bring it down. trim I need a little right otherwise look at that that's pretty cool works good Okay, I've shut off the, the motor. Uh-oh, something just flew off. I think it was my... Uh, <laughs> wow, this is cool. This is really cool. Whoa, that couldn't be, could be not cool. The fact that it has a tailwheel steering now is really well needed and a good thing, but it didn't help me as you're going to see. Also, I want you to know that unlike a helicopter or an airplane, you must understand there is no fore and aft cyclic, only left and right. Up and down is done with the elevator and yaw is with rudder. So you've got to learn everything you can in the very first flight in order to land it without breaking the blades or blade holder. Remember this also, when you're landing the Auto G, the rotor blades are still spinning pretty fast. There's no brake, so it's really imperative that you're facing absolutely into the wind or it'll tip over and you're going to break the blade holders. Oh, I lost my... Uh...
You know, folks, I don't recommend flying on grass as I'm doing here because the Auto G tips over really easy and the wheels catch in the grass. Luckily, I didn't break the blade, but I did break the blade holder. They give you spares of these, but I went ahead and made one of myself from a Metamucil can uh, lid. Those are really strong. They're flexible enough, and I actually think it works pretty good. We're going to fly it in a second. I'll show you. Got a crosswind, but we're going to try it anyway. Spin it up. Shut off the uh, power for the rotor. I put race tape, you know, 100 mile an hour tape or uh, duct tape we call it, on the leading edge of the blades all the way down the length, folded over. At first I used clear tape, but they'll break still. It's unlikely you'll break the blades with the duct tape on them, albeit they're a bit heavier. But not to worry, because the Auto G has lots of power. Well, I do recommend you get extra blades when you buy one of these, uh, because you're going to break them. You know, uh, Duraflight did a great job with the rotor system and its rotor pre-rotor spin-up, but alas, the blades are horribly weak. Well, that said, once you beef it up and learn how to fly it, it's a blast to fly. Whoa! <laughs> it's a bit windy for that, but hey! My rotor head worked. Look at that. All right. All right. So. Whew. Let's try something else. Oh, yeah.